Dear Dad, it's been 15 years since the big death wiped out everyone over the age of innocence. The end of mm. Age of innocence, been 15 years. What are we talking about? Luke Perry, what is going on? Today, welcome everybody. I'm doing a new thing here where I'm going to start going back and talking about some of my favorite science fiction shows over the years that either didn't get enough traction, got canceled, or were shows that had really small audiences. And first up is Jeremiah by J. Michael Stradinsky. Now, one of the reasons this show came up first on my list is because we've been talking about Babylon 5 a lot recently. And when I was putting together a list of some of my shows, Jeremiah is right there at the top, along with Jericho, of course, Firefly, which a lot of people know of, um, other stuff, Killjoys. There's a lot of good stuff out there, and I want to talk about them. But today, we're diving into Jeremiah first. Uh, but if this is your first time tuning into the channel, welcome. I'm Tim Anderson, a.k.a. Renfell. And I do lots of different things here on YouTube. Uh, shows, TVs, books, uh, video games, play a lot of games. We stream, uh, have a Discord. I'm a game developer, do lots of fun stuff here. So hopefully that kind of stuff entertains you. And if you get to this video and you like it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of the good stuff. And of course, don't forget to join the Discord. Links are down below. Let's dive back in over here, everybody. Um, this show, if you've never watched it before, I'm going to open up the wiki here and tab over so that we can we can dive in, get some more coffee in me. It's, it's early. So, Jeremiah is a post-apocalyptic action drama television series, as the wiki states it. Now, the only reason I ever even gave this series a shot in the first place was because J. Michael Straczynski was the creator of this show, um, and he was the writer and everything else, and I had huge amounts of respect for Straczynski from what he had done with Babylon 5, Crusade, the Rangers spinoff, all the Bab 5 stuff. I was just, I was, in, I was in love with this. Now, I did not actually watch this when it aired because I didn't watch Babylon 5 when it aired. I watched it years later was when I stumbled across it and consequently found this show. And again, the reason I say I wouldn't have watched it is because I knew nothing about Luke Perry aside from the fact that he was one of the um, uh, like heartthrobs from that show, what was it, Beverly Hills 90210, I think is what it, called, what it was called. And so I didn't really know who he was, and so there was a part of me that was like, you know, if it would have just been him, I would have like dismissed it because Luke Perry doing a sci-fi post-apocalyptic drama show like that. No, he's a heartthrob guy. Like he only does romance stuff. So, um, but because it had uh, J. Marco Stradinsky attached, I was willing to give it a shot. Um, Malcolm Jamal Warner is also in the show, which I knew him from. I think I want to say the Cosby Show back in the day. I could be misremembering him. Um, but, you know, he's done some really cool stuff over the years as well. But um, it's, this is one of those shows where it had a really good plot, really good pacing, a lot of fun. Um, and the only issue with it was that uh, when it ended production in 2003, it was because the management of Showtime decided they were no longer interested in doing science fiction programming anymore. Now, that has obviously changed, I think, over the years since then. They've done a little bit of other stuff. Um but at that point in time, Straczynski decided to leave after the production of the second season due to creative differences between him and MGM. So even if the show would have continued, it would have continued without Straczynski past season two. Now, this show is very loosely based on a comic book that was written in the 1970s, I believe. I'm going to scroll down here to confirm that. Loosely based on a series by Belgian writer Herman Hoopen. Um, the series began in 1979, but apart from the uh, names of the two characters and the personality of the protagonist in the post apocalyptic setting, there's no other similarities. Now, I want to go back here. I'm going to see if I can play through the trailer here, if it shows us anything of interest here. Um, one of the things I loved about this show, so they have this Jeep, and basically this is essentially a sort of like road show with these two dudes who are traveling around the countryside in a post-apocalyptic setting and having adventures along the way. Now, the setting is basically, and I'm remembering off the top of my head now if we want to uh, dive into this in the wiki here. I'm going to go back here for a moment. Um, 
It's basically there's a plague that comes along and kills everyone over the age of 15. Um, actually, it says here in the wiki, anyone over the age of 13. I thought it was 15. Anyway, kills everybody who's older than a teenager and called the big death of the big D. And these two guys meet up 15 years later, as we saw in the intro to this video with the bit of a snippet from that, that trailer for the first episode. Um, or for the intro, I should say. And the show picks up with these two dudes meeting up, joining forces, and traveling along, and just living within this world um, where they've spent the past 15 years growing up since they were teenagers. Now, Jeremiah has sort of an underlying motivation because he's looking for this place called the Valhalla Sector, which is where his father, who was a researcher on um, viruses, had mentioned to Jeremiah as being a possible refuge shortly before he disappeared during the chaos that surrounded the Big Death. Excuse me. And then along the way, he picks up um, Curdy, who's who's the character played by Malcolm. And um, we go on this adventure of them basically seeking out information about Valhalla Sector, which is sort of the overarching story arc. And then in between that, we have these adventures of the week sort of sort of scenarios with the episodes. But there's also some smaller arcs um, b between that. So during the first season. Um, they keep encountering threats that originate from Valhalla Sector, which they eventually discover is this bunker complex that used that basically um, houses the remains of the U.S. government. <laughs> um, and it, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that I don't want to spoil. Um, the wiki doesn't give a ton of information. Um, then we get into season two, and we start getting into this whole uh, crusading army from the east with this uh, prophetic figure known as Daniel leading this crazy army. Um, and basically we have the survivors living in Thunder Mountain, which I believe was the um, Cheyenne Mountain Complex, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, um, in Colorado, which if I'm not mistaken was also SG-1. So I mean, there's, there's, some, there's some fun stuff going on here. This is a great show. It's a really, really good show. It's fun. The episodes are, you know, fairly fast paced. How many episodes were in this? I want to say it says 35 episodes across two seasons. Um, so we got a chunk of episodes here. I don't know um, where you can get it these days, to be honest with you, if it's streaming or not. It says something here. Series or episode are available. Digital purchase on Amazon, Hulu, and iTunes. I don't know how recent it is. Um, Straczynski had originally prepared this as a five-year series, just like he had done with Babylon 5. But because of all the changes that were going on with Showtime at the time, it ultimately got canceled before the second season even aired. Um, so uh, it ultimately resulted in the show not continuing. And it, it was an unfortunate reality because the show is really, really, really good. So if, you, if you've ever seen like Jericho, which is another show I'm going to be reviewing here on my channel, this is another show that I think I got like two seasons. There was like a, a campaign to bring it back from season one. Um, a similar sort of post-apocalyptic setting, but it's a lot different because that one you had like a community of a town coming together, you know, after this nuclear thing. Uh, but this is more, here's a virus that's wiped everyone out who's an adult. So a lot of the stuff that I like about this show that's really fun is exploring the social structures that would have sprung up with a 15-year range of teenagers who had never known anything other than the internet and all this other stuff, growing up suddenly in a world without internet, without phones, without all these things, without any parental guidance. You know, you have no scientists anymore. You have no engineers. You have no technicians. It's just a bunch of teenagers who have to learn how to live in a world without electricity and without all these things and so how does that how does the social structure evolve through that time and as a result you get this post-apocalyptic setting where shit's a little bit crazy <laughs> it's a lot of fun i would highly 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 recommend this series if you've never watched it before it's only two seasons it's a small investment of your time um i would love it just for the quality of the writing but also because for me it showed me a side of Luke Perry that I would have never got to know as an actor, and he is a brilliant actor, R.I.P., uh, passing away, you know, within the last couple of years, um, but uh, brilliant stuff. There's a lot of guest stars on this show. We had um, Sean Austin comes in during season two, claiming to be a messenger from God. We've got um, Candace McClure, who is from Battlestar Galactica. 
Um, there's a lot of really cool Peter Stebbings, who was this is the first thing I ever saw him in, and then I've since seen him in a lot of other stuff. And um, I think there was a pirate show even with John Malkovich that he was a part of. You know, so a lot of really cool actors are a part of this show as as guest stars or or secondary supporting cast. Highly recommend giving it a shot if you haven't already, because again, it is J. Michael Straczynski, and it shows off the quality of his storytelling and writing. So if you like Babylon 5, this is going to be a show you might like if you haven't already watched it. If you've gotten to the end here and you liked what you heard, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you get all the updates on future stuff that I do here on YouTube. Don't forget, we have a Discord that you can join down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can then join as a member, or you can head over to our Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash wanderinghermits, where my wife, my brother, and I are building our own fantastical world called the Weave in the Void. More information about that in the links down below. Stay safe, everybody. I will see you in the next episode.